Now the NASTRAN input file is a text file arranged in five sections. The first two sections, the NASTRAN statement and file management section, are optional. Then the executive control section is required and it specifies the type of analysis that will be performed. The C end delimiter indicates the beginning of the case control section where titles and load cases are defined. The begin bulk delimiter indicates the beginning of the bulk data section where the finite element model data including the nodes, elements, material properties, element properties, and boundary conditions are all defined. Finally, the file ends with the end data delimiter. Each bulk data entry has a specific format, and these are described in the NASTRAN Quick Reference Guide. Here we have the example of the CROD entry from the Quick Reference Guide, and it tells us that the first five fields in the input file are used to define this element. We have our element ID, property ID, and then the two nodes that are connected by the element. This is a relatively simple example, but it shows what's required to define a CROD element. Each line in the input file contains 80 columns or characters. A bulk data entry may span multiple lines if it's more complex. There are three different data formats for the individual fields in the input file. These can be integers, real values, or character strings. Each field in a particular entry has a required data format, and again, these are explained in the Quick Reference Guide. Now, since each line in the input file contains 80 columns, there are three different field formats for entering data into those columns. There's the small field, large field, and free field formats. In the small field format, the 80 characters are divided into 10 fields, each 8 characters wide. So here, looking at this example, uh, in field 4, we have a value of 7.5. Field 5 has a value of 8.6, and so on. Now, note that each each field here is only eight characters wide, which brings us to the large field format, where if more precision is required to enter a value, we can use this format, which is indicated by an asterisk after the keyword, so here we have grid asterisk, indicating that the remaining fields will be 16 characters wide and spread out over two lines. So here we can see that fields two through five are on the first line and each 16 characters wide, and then 6 through 9 are on the second line. This allows us, again, more digits for more precision. Finally, there's the free field format, where instead of having to keep track of the number of spaces between entries to maintain those 8 or 16 uh, character wide entries, we, we can separate the fields with commas. Now, we still only have uh, 8 characters to deal with here, so real numbers with more than 8 characters are rounded off and will lose some precision. Then there's continuation entries, where if there's more data required for an entry than will fit on one line of 80 characters, they continue on the next line. So we show two methods for continuation entries here. In the last field, field 10, on the first line of a mat 8 card in this example, we can enter a continuation entry, which begins with a plus sign and includes some text. That same entry will begin the next line telling NASTRAN that the data is a continuation of the line before. Now, in method two, these continuation entries can be left blank, and as long as these lines are in, in order in the NASTRAN input file, NASTRAN will know that they go together and, and will be able to deal with the continuation. Here's some general input format rules for working with data files. Your input data in fields one and 10, so the first and the last field on a small field format line, must be left justified. The data in fields two through nine don't have to be left or right justified, but remember that errors result if data extends beyond its field into another field. Your input data items must not have any embedded blanks, so you can have spaces before or after your data, but not in the middle. All real numbers, including zero, must contain a decimal point to indicate to NASTRAN that they're real numbers and not integers. Finally, many fields have default values. If these fields are left blank, the defaults will be used. And these defaults are available in the Quick Reference Guide. So here we have a sample model. It's a simple model with four nodes and five elements, uh, particular loading, and material properties. And so we can create a NASTRAN input file to represent this situation, which we've done here. 
We have our executive control section that says we're going to run a solution 101 linear static analysis. We go into our case control with our titles, where we, and then we define our loads and boundary conditions. We can follow the arrows and see that load 10 defines force 10, which will be used in this case, and, and it's applied at node 4 of 1,000 pounds in the negative y direction. Now the specifics of the format and which fields mean wit, what for this force entry are available in the quick reference guide. But we can see that this does represent our model with our 1,000 pounds in the negative y direction at node 4. Now note how these are separated out into the small field format where each, each field is eight characters wide. Our comments uh, start with a dollar sign, and we can see this first row of comments here uh, is used to show us where these columns are. So this is just a helpful hint so that we can look down at the rest of our model and make sure that the data is in the appropriate fields. Other comments let us know what certain sections of the file are going to be doing. And we can see that we create our nodes, and we create our elements, and then, then we have our PROD, or our element properties, our material properties, and then our loads and boundary conditions before the end data entry, which signifies the end of the file.